Hello, I'm Davina of SheepAndStitch.com and today we're going to knit the Cushy Cowl. Now the Cushy Cowl is knit in garter stitch, which is great for beginners, and it's also knit in the round. So instead of getting a long rectangle like a normal scarf, it knits up into a big circle. Like an infinity scarf, or if you're in the UK, you might call it a snood. Whatever you call it, the Cushy Cowl is great for looping around your neck. It's like a woolly circle of love. It's awesome. All right, so if you don't have this free pattern, grab it from sheepandstitch.com or click on the URL in the description below. Then meet me back here and we'll get started. All right, so I hope you've got your pattern handy because we're gonna go through the materials list together to make the cushy cowl. All right, so first thing on our list is 180 yards of super bulky yarn. Now I've got Malabrigo Rasta here and it is a super soft merino that I love wearing around my neck. All right, so the next thing that you're gonna need is a pair of 12 millimeters or US size 17 circular needles. So these here that I've got are 32 inches in length. So from here to here, it measures 32 inches, but you can get a pair that's anywhere from 32 inches to 40 inches. So 12 millimeters will give you a nice drapey fabric that's not too loose. And so we're gonna look at our sample right here. And you can see that the fabric is actually, you know, quite drapey, it's quite loose, it has some movement to it. It's not sort of stiff. That's really what I want with the cowl. I want the cowl to be really sort of drapey and casual. And you know, if you wrap it around your neck twice, it's gonna sit really nicely around your neck. It's not gonna look kind of, you know, stiff. It'll look really luxurious. All right, so that's what our 12 millimeter needles will give us. It'll give us a nice loose fabric. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna need is a stitch marker. Now a stitch marker looks like this. It's basically a little ring. And we're gonna use this to mark the beginning of our round on our circular needle. Now, if you don't have a stitch marker handy, that's okay. You can use a ring, like an actual ring that you wear on your finger. Um, and we can just slip this onto our needle and it'll mark the beginning of our round. Now, if you don't have a ring or a stitch marker, you can use a rubber band or a hair tie. Basically, anything that is round and ring-like, you can use as a stitch marker. All right, next thing on our list is a tapestry needle. Now a tapestry needle basically looks like a giant sewing needle. It has a really big eye here, and we're gonna use this to weave in our ends when we're finished our cowl. All right, next thing on our list is a pair of scissors. And last thing that we need is a measuring tape or a ruler. So if you've got these things handy, then we are ready to make the cushy cowl. Love this. All right, so let's get started. All right, so now let's move on to the first part of our pattern. We need to use the long tail cast on to cast on 100 stitches. So let's stop right there. If you already know how to do the long tail cast on, then please go ahead and cast on 100 stitches with the long tail and move on to the next part of our pattern, which is joining in the round. Now, if you don't know a thing about the long tail cast on, then that's perfect because I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. All right, so if you know what's what, then move on to the next step. If you don't know a thing, <laughs> and that's okay, then I'm gonna show you how to do the long tail cast on. So, for this demonstration, I'm not gonna use my circular needles here because they're really dark and my yarn is also really dark and you can see it just doesn't show up very well. It's not very clear. So I'm gonna use a pair of lighter needles these ones right here, and the yarn shows up really nicely on these, so I'm just gonna stick with these flat needles. You can certainly use your circular needles, or if you wanna use flat needles, you know, that's fine too. They're a little bit easier to control, so that's totally fine. All right, so let's talk about the long tail cast on. Why would you wanna use a long tail cast on and not the easy cast on? You might be thinking that, and I'm gonna tell you why. So I don't know why I just unraveled my ball of yarn, but <laughs> I'm gonna bring out my sample and I'm gonna show you why the long tail is a really nice option. So if you look at our, our sample right here, our cushy cowl, you can see that it is quite stretchy. It's knit up in garter stitch and garter stitch is by nature very stretchy. And so when you've got a stretchy fabric like garter stitch, you want the cast on edge, which is right up here, to uh, you know really support that stretchiness. 
So you want your cast on edge to also be very stretchy. And as you can see, our cast on edge here is very stretchy. It really, you know, matches the stretchiness of our yarn so that everything kind of stretches together. So in order to get this stretchy edge, we need to use the long tail cast on. So the long tail cast on is perfect for pretty much any kind of cast on. You know, when you're not sure what cast on to use, use the long tail cast on. It's just really foundational and really awesome. So the rule of thumb is when in doubt, use the long tail cast on. All right, so how do you, how do you cast on with the long tail cast on? That is a great question. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. So the long tail cast on is called the long tail cast on because it uses the long tail of your yarn. Now, what does that mean? All right, when you make a slip knot like this, and most cast ons start with a slip knot, you'll notice that our slip knot divides our yarn into two sections. We've got this area right here, which is our long tail, and you've got this part of our yarn, which is attached to our ball of yarn, and this part of our yarn is called the working yarn, because usually we knit and purl with this part of our yarn, the yarn that's attached to our ball. And this part of our yarn is called the long tail. It usually doesn't really do anything when we're actually knitting, it just kind of hangs out. And of course, when we're casting on with the easy cast on, from a previous video you might remember, we're casting on with the working yarn. So the easy cast on went something like this. We just looped our working yarn onto our needle like this, right? So all of our cast on stitches with the easy cast on was made with our working yarn and our long tail just kind of hung out at the back, didn't really do anything. But the long tail cast on actually uses the long tail of the yarn as part of the cast on. So what we need to do to cast on with the long tail is we first need to figure out how much of the long tail we need in order to cast on. So how we're gonna do that is, well, you could eyeball it and some people do, they kind of look at their yarn and they go, okay, I need 10 stitches and I think I can probably get 10 cast on stitches with about this amount of yarn. You could do that, but it's kind of risky because sometimes, you know, you get the length wrong and then you realize, okay, I don't have enough yarn to cast on and you've got to rip out and start all over again. And that kind of blows, that's kind of a bummer. So here's an easier way, a better way to figure out how much yarn you need. So what you would do first is you would take your yarn and just wrap it around your needle like this. So you don't need to, you know, have too much of a tail, just a little bit like this is perfectly fine. So wrap your yarn around your needle, around the needle that you're actually going to be casting on with, and wrap it around the number of times that you need stitches. So for example, if you need to cast on 10 stitches, wrap your yarn around 10 times. So we've got our first wrap here, and we're gonna do our second wrap, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Cool. So just pinch that point where you have the last wrap and take your needle right off of your yarn. And now you know that this length of yarn is gonna give you 10 cast on stitches. That's enough to cast on 10 stitches. And I usually give it, you know, a couple inches more just to give me some cushion. So let's start casting on. So I know that, you know, this is gonna give me 10 cast on stitches. And this is the point where I'm gonna make my slip knot. So I'm just going to make my slip knot a loop, bring the yarn tail in the back and pick it out through the loop. So now I've got my slip knot, cool. All right, so I'm gonna take my slip knot and put it onto my needle and just tighten it up like this. All right, so this is looking a lot like our easy cast on, huh? All right, we start with the slip knot, but this is where things get a little bit different with the long tail cast on. So with the long tail cast on, I need my long tail up in the front. Right now, my working yarn is up in the front and my long tail is in the back. And I don't want that. I want my long tail in the front. So how we're gonna do this is I'm gonna take my stitch, pull it right off the needle and turn it around and put it right back on the needle. Pretty easy, right? So now my long tail is up in the front and my working yarn is in the back. All right, and that's exactly how I want it. All right, so let's start casting on now. So this is where my little weird little ditty comes in, okay? So in order to start casting on with the long tail, we're gonna need our left hand, and we're gonna need these two fingers on our left hand. And what we're gonna do with these two fingers on our left hand is we're just going to clamp down on these two yarn threads, okay? 
And in addition to that, I'm gonna take my finger up here and just kind of secure my first stitch on my needle because I don't want it kind of rolling around like this. I want it pretty secure. All right, so like, let's keep our stitch secure. Left hand, these two fingers, clamp down on our two yarn threads like this. And then I'm gonna take my thumb and my forefinger and I'm just gonna push open these two yarn threads like this, all right? So again, left hand, two fingers clamp down on these two yarn threads, and then with our thumb and our forefinger, we're gonna push open these two yarn threads. Okay, so I call this the clamp and open sesame. I don't know why, but uh, you know, it kind of stuck, and most people who I teach this to kind of pick it up really quickly, because it's kind of weird. Okay, so left hand, two fingers clamp, thumb and forefinger open sesame. And you can see that you get kind of a diamond shape or you know a fortune cookie shape um, when you do that, right? So you want your clamping to be pretty tight because you don't want your hand to kind of slide down, right? If you have a really loose clamp, then your hand might kind of slide down and you don't really want that. You want a firm clamp and an open sesame. So try that, you know, try that motion a few times. You can certainly say it out loud. And then try moving your hand back and forth like this, okay? Move your hand back and forth and get comfortable with the motion of clamping, opening sesame, and moving your hand back and forth, all right? So once you're comfortable doing that, then we're gonna start putting some stitches on this needle. Okay, so once you are comfortable, we're gonna start all over again. We're gonna use our left hand and clamp, open sesame, and then we're gonna move our hand to the front like this so that I can see all of my fingers and I can see these two yarn threads flowing through my fingers. And then I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna touch it to my thumb and I'm gonna go through the loop on my thumb like this and I'm gonna turn my hand, take my needle and go through the second loop, okay? And then I'm gonna bring it through the original loop on my thumb like this and then I'm gonna pull down, let go of everything and pull down. And there we go, here's our first cast on stitch with the long tail cast on. Pretty cool, huh? So we're just gonna do that again. Left hand, two fingers, clamp down, open, sesame. I'm gonna take my needle, whoops, I'm gonna take my hand and move it to the front so that I can see all of my fingers. I'm gonna take my needle, touch it to my thumb, go through the loop on my thumb, turn my hand again, go through the second loop here, and then go through the original loop on my thumb and then pull down. So there we go, there is our third cast on stitch with the long tail cast on. So you would just go through the exact same motions until you get, you know, the number of stitches that you want. Right, so two fingers, clamp, open sesame, turn your hand to the front, touch your thumb, through the loop, turn your hand through the second loop, and then back through the original loop on your thumb, pull down. All right, so once you get the hang of this, you can go pretty quickly and you can get a, you know, a rhythm on it, and you can cast on a lot of stitches really quickly. But you know, when you're first getting started, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit funky and the hand gymnastics might be hard to, um, you know, maneuver. But you know, if you get stuck, just say it out loud, you know? Two fingers, clamp, open sesame, turn your hand to the front, touch your thumb, go through the loop, turn your hand again, second loop, and then back through the original loop, pull down. All right, so I just wanna show you right now what's going on. So you can see that the more stitches we cast on, the shorter our long tail gets, right? Our long tail is like, I don't know what, like four inches right now? So the more stitches you cast on, the shorter your long tail gets. So that's what I mean when I say that you need to figure out how much you know, yarn you need for your casting on, or else you could get to the very end of your long tail and, and realize, oh my gosh, I have five more stitches I need to cast on and then you gotta pull it off and start from the beginning again, right? So that's no fun. So always measure out how much yarn you're gonna need for your long tail cast on. All right, so again, try that a few times. Once you get used to it, then you can start casting on 100 stitches for your cowl. Now, a little note about casting on 100 stitches. Okay, so earlier I said that, you know, you should figure out how much yarn you need by wrapping your yarn around your needle. So with your circular needle, I would not advise that you, you know, wrap your yarn around a hundred times because that's gonna get really, you know, clumsy and unwieldy really quickly. A better way to do this, to figure out how much yarn you need, is to wrap your yarn around 10 times first. So just do that. So let's take our yarn, 
around our circular needle like this and let's wrap it around 10 times. So here's two wraps, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so let's pinch that part, take our needle off. And now we know that this length of yarn right here, here we go, this length of yarn is gonna give us 10 stitches to cast on, right? So if we wanna know how much length of yarn we need for 20 stitches, we would just fold this length of yarn like this against our working yarn. And now I know that this amount of yarn, so from our tail end, right from the tip to this area is gonna give us 20 stitches, right? Cause I folded in half the length of yarn it takes to make 10 cast on stitches. So we can just keep going, right? Once we know how many stitches we need or how much length of yarn we need for 10 stitches, we can just keep going in multiples of 10, right? By folding our yarn against the working yarn. So here we go, I've just done it the first time. We've got enough yarn for 20 cast on stitches. And if I fold it again, then I know I've got enough yarn for 30 stitches, right? So an easier way to do this and a quicker way would just be to you know, measure your yarn against 20 stitches. So again, this is 20 stitches. So I'm just going to pinch this point, which is our 20 stitch point and unfold it. So this is good for 20. So I can just fold this again against my working yarn. And now I know that this amount of yarn will give me 40 stitches, right? And if I fold it again, here we go fold it again, then I know that this amount of yarn will give me 60 stitches. And if I fold it yet again, then I'm moving up by 20, right? So then I've got enough yarn here for 80 stitches. And if I fold it one more time, then I know that this amount of yarn will give me enough yarn to cast on 100 stitches. So right, oopsie, let's get this, let's get this hanging straight. So right here will give me enough yarn for 100 stitches. So this is a pretty long yarn tail, huh? I mean, look at this. You can kind of unravel it a little bit and sort of set it aside. But you know, this is, this is our whole yarn tail. And so what we would do is, you know, this is the point where we would make our slip knot, right? So I'm gonna give it a couple more inches and then I'm just going to make my slip knot, right? Like this. And then put our needle through, tighten, and then, whoops, what just happened there? All right, so we're gonna tighten and then we're gonna make sure, of course, that our yarn tail is up in front. Right now, our yarn tail is in the back, so we would take our, take our stitch off, turn it around, put it back on our needle, and there we go. Now our yarn tail is up in the front and our working yarn is in the back and we can start casting on, right? Two hands, two, two fingers, clamp, open sesame, right? And then we would just, you know, start casting on in the long tail. Right, so that is the long tail cast on and there you have it. This is how you would cast on with the long tail and also how you would figure out how much yarn you need to cast on with the long tail. All right, so cast on 100 stitches on your circular needles and then meet me back here and we are gonna start joining all of these stitches in the round to start knitting in garter stitch. All right, so now you've cast on all of your stitches with the long tail cast on. You should have 100 stitches all the way around. And once you have that, then we are ready to join in the round. But before we can join, we have to make sure that our stitches are not twisted. That is really crucial. So let's take a look here. We wanna make sure that all of our stitches here are facing in the same direction. So right now they're facing inwards. And so we wanna make sure that all of them are facing inwards. And if they're not, we can just move them. All right, so you can see here, we've got a twist, all right? So we have it twisted. So if that happens, all you have to do is untwist it, literally untwist it and move it so that they're facing inwards. All right, so I think my stitches are untwisted at this point. They're all facing the same direction and they are, yep, they're all facing inwards. And that's great. So once you have your stitches straight and untwisted, you can get your stitch marker out. This is its shining moment when it really comes in handy. And we're just gonna put it on your right needle like that, okay? And now we are ready to join in the round. Pretty exciting, huh? So if we look at our pattern, we're gonna be knitting garter stitch in the round. How garter stitch in the round works is you would knit one round and then you would purl the other round and you would just 
repeat those two rounds. Knit one round, purl one round, knit one round, purl one round. So now we're just gonna start our first round of garter stitch by knitting the round. So we would just take our right hand needle and literally knit into the first stitch on our left needle. So we're just gonna knit, take our yarn, bring it from back to front and pull it through that first stitch. And there we go, now we have joined our work in the round. So look at that, now we are joined in the round. Pretty cool, huh? So now we're just gonna keep knitting all of these stitches until we reach the end of the round, which is marked by this stitch marker. All right, so, you know, pretty, pretty easy. It's not a lot of fancy work here, um, you know? So that's what we're gonna do. We're just going to keep knitting. And once we've reached the end of our round, then we're just going to purl. All right, so knit your first round, this round right here, and then meet me back here and we're gonna purl the next round. And then we're just gonna kinda take it from there, okay? All right, so I am nearing the end of my knit round right here. I've got one more and here is my last one. Cool, so now I've just finished my first round of garter stitch in the round. I've just done my knit round, pretty cool. Look at all my knit stitches, these little Vs. And now I'm ready to move on to my second round, which is just purling. So I did all knit stitches for this round, and now I'm just going to purl my whole round. So what I would do is I would take my yarn, my working yarn, bring it to the front, whoops, <laughs> bring it to the front of my needle because we're gonna purl next, right? And I'm gonna take my stitch marker and just move it from my left needle to my right needle. All right, and now I'm ready to go. I'm ready to start again. So I'm just gonna start purling. So just a reminder, when you purl, you have your yarn up front and you're gonna take your right hand needle and flip it from the top to the bottom of your um, stitch on your left needle and take your working yarn and move it from the back to the front and then pull it through. All right, so what I like to do when I reach the join, you know, a new round, is I like to just kind of tighten it up a little bit, maybe even move it to the back and tighten it up, and then move it back to the front. So this little join, it's easy for, you know, the stitches to get kind of loose, so I don't want that to happen, so that's why I kind of pull it a little bit, just tug it. All right, and so now we can just keep going. Now we're just gonna purl all of the stitches on this round. So, Sometimes you might kind of forget where you, you're at. You might forget, okay, is this a purl round or is this a knit round? And the best way for you to remember that is to just look at the stitches that are coming next. So for example, you can see here that these are all knit stitches, right? You can see these by these little V shapes. So a knit stitch looks like this. It looks like a little V. So when you're knitting garter stitch in the round, you wanna purl all of your knit stitches. So this is a knit stitch, so we know, okay, I need to purl the rest of these, all right? And when you have you know, a purl stitch like this, so when you finish your whole purl round and you're back at the beginning of the round, you would know that you gotta knit the next round because you've got purl stitches here. So with garter stitch in the round, you would knit your purl stitches and you would purl your knit stitches. All right, so I hope that makes sense. So you've got knit stitches here, right? A whole round of knit stitches that you just knit. So you would purl those stitches, all right? So again, you would purl your knits and you would knit your purls. And that's pretty much what garter stitch in the round is. All right, so just continue on doing this, purl this round. And when you reach the end of this round, you would just knit. And after that round, you would purl. All right, so do that until you have seven inches of garter stitch, at which point we are going to bind off and weave in our ends, and then you're gonna be able to wear your cowl out. Isn't that exciting? So keep on purling. Keep on purling and knitting and purling and knitting and you know repeating those two rows. All right, so I'll see you when you've got seven inches. Oh hey, what's up? I'm just knitting some garter stitch in the round and I'm gonna show you a technique to deal with something that happens when you're knitting and that is, oh yeah, here it is, running out of yarn. So when this happens, don't freak out. Don't freak out unless you don't have any more yarn, in which case, okay, maybe freak out a little bit or buy some new yarn. But if you already have a new ball of yarn as I do, 
then the only thing that you need to do is join it to your work. Now, this is actually a really easy thing to do and I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. So when this happens, what you can do is just backtrack a little bit, leave a little bit of a tail from your old yarn. So I'm gonna take, you know, maybe a stitch. That's pretty good. So like, it's, you know, four or five inches on your old yarn and then take your new ball of yarn and where is my tail? Here it is. Take your new ball of yarn and then we're going to slip our right, here we go, slip our right needle into our stitch. And then with our new ball of yarn, I'm just gonna lay it at the back here, sort of with my old ball. And I'm gonna keep it secure with a finger. I'm just gonna kind of clamp down on it. And then I'm gonna take this new ball of yarn and just knit into the next stitch. All right, and I'm gonna kind of tug it a little bit, but you know, try and keep this secure and I'm gonna knit into the second stitch like this. All right, and then I'm gonna knit into the third stitch with my new ball of yarn. And after three stitches, your new ball should be pretty secure. So you can see when I tug on it, the strand where we joined, they stay in place. All right, so let's take a look. When you join in this way, you'll see that there are two yarn threads that stick out, right? Your old ball of yarn and your new ball of yarn. And there's also this ugly hole that happens. Now, don't worry about this hole. When we finish our cowl, we are gonna come back around and just weave in these ends with a tapestry needle. All right, so these strands won't stay here forever. We're gonna weave them in, and then we're gonna cut them off and it'll look really nice. All right, but that is pretty much how you join a new ball of yarn to your work. So when you're coming back around, you're, you know, you finished your row and you're coming back around, you would just purl over these two stitches, just like it ain't no thing, and you know, just ignore that little gap. You might have to make sure that this, these strands are secure so that they don't come out too loose, but you know, otherwise you would just purl over them, you know, as if they were a normal stitch. So that's one way that you can join a new ball of yarn to your work. All right, now let's talk about the second way that you can join. Now the second way is the one that I usually use. I prefer that one because it's a little bit more stealth. <laughs> uh, so I like that one a little bit better, but this one also works fine. If you're kind of in the groove, you're in the zone, you know, this is a nice way to join really quickly. Now the second way to join a new ball of yarn requires that you have a little bit more of a tail on your old ball. So I'm just gonna take off some of these stitches that I've knit so I can get a little bit more of a tail. So what's going on here? Okay, let's take one more stitch off. Here we go. All right, so now I've got kind of like, you know, like 10 inches of my old ball of yarn and I want that, that's a good length to have. And so now when I reach my next stitch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my new ball of yarn and I'm just going to lay it over my old strand of yarn like this. And I'm just gonna use these two strands as if they were one. I'm just gonna pretend that they've, you know, magically merged together. And I'm just gonna hold them as if they were one strand, one strand of yarn, and I'm gonna knit into the next stitch. So I'm gonna make sure this, you know, doesn't flop around. I'm gonna keep it over my right hand needle just to keep it secure. I'm holding two strands in my right hand as if they were one, and I'm just going to knit into the next stitch like this. So I just knit like it ain't no thing. They're just two stitches together, really stealth, and I'm gonna keep going. So I've just knit one stitch with two of my threads held together, and you can see them right here. This is one knit stitch, but there's two strands, right? And I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna knit into my second stitch like that with two strands of yarn. And I'm gonna knit into my third stitch with two strands of yarn. All right, there we go. So now you can see that these three stitches have been knit with our new yarn and our old yarn carried together. And on the back, you can see that, you know, this is where we joined. And these are our two yarns that we held together and it's really secure. So my new ball of yarn is very secure when I tug on it it doesn't move around at all. You know, it's right here, this is where we joined. It doesn't move at all, it's not shifting. And my old ball of yarn has been carried around in the back and it's also very secure because we knit into three stitches with it. So you don't have to worry about it coming loose or coming undone. 
So after you've knit three stitches with your old ball and your new ball of yarn held together, then you can just drop your old ball, your old strand, like just, you know, this one, and just take up your new ball of yarn and knit with that. All right, so now you can just keep on knitting, keep on going in your garter stitch with your new ball of yarn. And that's it, that's all there is to it. So when we're, you know, when we're done our project, we would come back again and we would weave in these little strands of yarn and it would be pretty much invisible. So this is a really nice invisible join. They both are, but I'm a bigger fan of this one. And you know, when you come back around, you know, you finished your round, you're coming back, you would just purl into these three stitches as if they were just a normal stitch. So don't pay any mind to the fact that you've got two strands making up one stitch. Just purl into them as if they were one stitch. All right, so that is how you join a new ball of yarn to your work. So keep on knitting in garter stitch in the round and you know, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so let's look at our cowl. I mean, it is really starting to look like a cowl now. I mean, this garter stitch looks amazing. All right, so let's measure it out to make sure that we are at seven inches. So let's take a look here and yeah, we are, we are at seven inches, perfect. Now, if you want to keep on knitting, you want a big, thick cowl, you can keep doing that. Um, if yarn permits, just keep on going in garter stitch. If you're happy with seven inches, then we can start binding off. But whatever you decide, once you get to the width that you're happy with, you're gonna bind off. Now, I've just finished a purl row, as you can see here, which means that my next row is going to be a knit row. And that's awesome, because we want to bind off, we want to cast off in, our, in a knit row. All right, so. We're gonna do that right now. So here's a little uh, reminder of how to do a bind off. So with our right hand needle, we're gonna knit into our next stitch like this. Here we go. And then we're gonna knit into our second stitch like this. And then we're gonna take our left hand needle, slip it under our first stitch, and then we're gonna slip it over our second stitch, just like this. There we go. So we've just bound off one stitch and we're gonna just keep doing that. So we're gonna knit another stitch and then move our needle into the first stitch and slip it over the second. Okay, and we're gonna do that around the whole round. Now the important thing to remember about binding off is that you wanna do it loosely, okay? So you don't want like a death grip on your yarn. Keep it nice and loose, loosey-goosey. You know, keep it looser than how you would normally knit. All right, so I'm just keeping a really loose hold on it right now and that's because I want a nice loose bind off edge. I don't want it to be tight. I want it to sit nice and flat and to give a bit of a stretch too because garter stitch tends to get kind of stretchy. All right, so we're just gonna keep binding off until we reach the end of our row and then we're gonna move on to the last step of our pattern which is weaving in all of our loose ends. All right, so that would be the loose ends like here, our long tail from our cast on, the places where we join a new ball of yarn, like here. All right, so that's gonna be our next step, but for now, we're just going to bind off. So let's do that. Meet me back here when you've bound off your entire row, and we'll move on to our last step. All right, so we are almost done our bind off here, and let's see. Do one more knit, here we go. And I'm doing it really loosely. And here we are, our last bind off. Awesome, so here we go. We've bound off all of our stitches. And now we're ready to get our scissors involved and we're just gonna cut off, you know, maybe about 10 inches or so. Just snip that right off. And we're gonna take the tail end of our yarn that we just snipped off and we're gonna bring it around the front of our yarn. This is what I always do. And then we're just going to take this stitch on our needle and pull it over the yarn tail like that. All right, so there we go and pull it through like that. Alrighty, so now our needles are, you know, they're gone. Our, uh, our cowl is off the needles and it looks pretty awesome, I think. Pretty great, huh? I mean, look at this cowl. All right, so now we're gonna finish off our cowl by weaving in the ends with this tapestry needle. So it's a really good idea to get a tapestry needle because you'll have 
you know, it'll really come in handy when you're trying to like weave in ends like this, your cast on long tail, and also, you know, parts of, of your knitting where you joined a new ball. So for example, right here, we've got a join right here. So we wanna just weave in these ends because it's gonna look kind of funky if you walk around, you know, with these ends <laughs> hanging off of your cowl, right? So let's do that now. All right, so let's try these two ends right now. And I'm gonna take my uh, tapestry needle right here and I'm just gonna thread it through these ends that need to be woven in. So here we go. And then I'm just going to, uh, you know, I'm gonna weave it into these stitches. So here, you know, this is kind of the join area. You can see there's a hole here. So I'm just going to take my needle and just put it through this stitch right here and kind of close up that hole. Now, weaving isn't, you know, an exact science. Um, you know, usually if it looks good, if it looks inconspicuous, you know, then that'll be what works for you. So I usually like to go, you know, three stitches horizontal and then maybe go up one stitch like this, do like a vertical stitch and then go down again. So I'm kind of going, you know, making almost like a circle with it. I'm going this way and up and then back this way. So all right, I've woven in a couple times a number of stitches and now I'm just gonna cut off that little end here. There we go. And let's get that out of the way. And here we go. So you can see it's been, you know, that little tail end has been woven in pretty seamlessly. You can't see it that well. Even on the other side, it's, it's hard for you to pick out exactly where that woven in tail is. Okay, so we're gonna do that on this side as well. We'll weave this in and then we're gonna weave in the tail ends of, um, of our cowl. So this area here is where we cast on and this is where we finished off our cast off. All right, so we would do more or less the same thing. We would just take our yarn and we would thread our tapestry needle with the yarn like this. And then I'm just gonna bring my needle into the next stitch on my cowl and close in that gap like that, all right? So that's what I'm gonna do. I might turn it around again and do that again. So through here, I'll just weave in this end like that. And if, you know, again, it's sort of like, you know, you're gonna look at it and if it looks even, you'll just leave it at that. If it doesn't, then maybe you'll do another stitch. So I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty decent. So I'm gonna turn it over and I'm going to weave in my end like this over here, maybe we'll go up here. And you'll basically be doing this on all of your yarn tails where you need to weave in. So I've gone three stitches over, I'll go one, one up. And the great thing about garter stitch is you can do a lot of camouflaging because you've got all these great bumps here. So you can kind of go into the bumps kind of, uh, you know, hide your yarn ends that way. So, okay, I've gone in three times and I think I'm ready to snip off this end now. So I might just kind of pull it a little bit so it doesn't look so tight. And now I'm just gonna snip off. There we go. Perfect. So you would do this on your cast on edge as well with this tail and then just go through, you know, the rest of your cowl in any area that needs to be woven in. So here's, you know, our other little tail where we joined a new ball of yarn. And then, you know, here maybe we'll just snip, snip this off here like that. And then you're done. Then you'll be done your cowl and you can wrap it around your head and wear it out and keep warm. And won't that be fun, huh? All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Go out you know, enjoy your cowl once you've woven in and have fun with it. That is the cushy cowl. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please like it and leave a comment below along with any questions you have. And of course, subscribe right here for more knitting videos. Now, if you knit a cushy cowl, then show it off online by tweeting or Instagramming with the hashtag cushy cowl. I'd love to see it. Okay, that's it for me. I'm Davina of SheepAndStitch.com and I'll catch you next time with another knitting video.